Good to see you all here tonight. Um, I would reiterate, WordCamp Brisbane is absolutely awesome. Who here has not been to a WordCamp before? Okay, check it out. It is amazing value, the best 50 bucks you'll ever spend. Doesn't matter whether you're a beginner or experienced, there's different streams, there's lots of stuff there. The WordCamp Brisbane website has got all the presenters listed and different, different um, sessions, so you can check out what's happening there. Absolutely recommend it, so you should definitely check that out. I'll just flick over to my presentation. Awesome. Uh, blogging strategies for WordPress. I'm guessing that most people here are WordPress users or bloggers or a mixture of both. Um, tonight I'm wanting to talk about, take away some of the misconceptions of blogging, uh, take away some of the fears, um, talk about how blogging applies specifically to WordPress, but also um, give you ideas about getting inspiration for, for improving your blogging and give you some reasons for doing that. Um, a little bit about me, um, I've been doing web dev since the early 90s and yes, the internet was invented then. Um, I've run an SEO agency for, for nearly 20 years. Um, I've been using WordPress for, for 12, probably more than that now. I've been pretty much involved in training for most of my life and these days my main business is based around WordPress training where we do one-on-one -on -one training, workshops around WordPress but also around SEO and blogging strategies and analytics and digital marketing. So all designed to, uh, to teach mostly business owners but people how to take control of their web presence. Um, as I said, I presume most of you are WordPress users. Um, who has got a WordPress site? Okay, a bunch of you have. Who are more business-based? Who are more personal, looking at doing a personal blog? Okay, awesome. Um, who considers themselves a blogger, so their site is mostly a blog? Okay, so a number of those here as well, awesome. Um, I want this to be an interactive session. I've only got about half an hour, so I'll probably have to go through fairly quickly. Um, if I say something that you think you can add to, or if you say something you disagree with, I'm happy if you don't wave at me. If I've got time, I'll stop and have a chat. Otherwise, Pete's will be arriving at 7.30. Um, I'll hopefully get some Q&As before then, but happy to have a chat with me over pizza afterwards if we don't get time. So first of all, what is a blog? So some, some basic definitions here. It's short for weblog. Um, historically, it's, it's a chronological sequence of posts. So a blog is made up of a number of posts. Um, chronological, traditionally, it would be based on date. So the most recent blog would be the top and older as they go. Um, it's usually updated regularly, and that's some of the challenge that most of us face. Um, it's usually focused on a particular topic or niche, and there's good reasons for that. I'll talk about from an SEO perspective why you might want to focus on something. Um, it's not always, particularly a personal blog can be a bit sort of over the shop a bit, but for most business blogs, I'd really recommend you focus on a particular area. Um, it can be interactive with comments, but these days, unless you've got a, a passionate, a big community or a, or a passionate group, a lot of those comments tend to be spam, but you've got that capability with WordPress to have comments involved in there. Um, usually there'll be a history, and this is a fabulous thing about your own WordPress-based site, never delete anything, keep it there. Um, you can keep that history, people can access it and Google can still find it. Okay, um, so that's an overview of a blog. Um, blogging for business, some people say to me, well, you know, I've got a business website, should I really be blogging? And blogging is even more important for a business website than it is for a traditional personal blog. Um, it's the single best way that you can raise your profile on Google. Google loves fresh, dynamic content. Traditionally on a business website, you put up your products, you put up your services, you put a little bit about what you do, and you've got nothing else to say. A blog allows you to be dynamic, it allows you to add fresh content, um, and it is the single best way. Google loves it, um, and it is the best way to raise your profile and improve your SEO benefits. And, you know, improve your search ranking, get more traffic, optimise conversion rates, and ultimately make sales, because as a business, you're not just doing a website for fun, you want to generate inquiries and sales. A blog is the best way to do it. You may not call it a blog, 
you might feel that's a little bit flippant. You might call it news. It's exactly the same thing. A news system is made up of articles. A blog is made up of posts. It's just semantics. It's just what you call it. So what is a blog made up of? There's lots of different elements, and a lot of these I'll refer specifically to WordPress. So as I said, in the terms of, uh, in WordPress terms, a blog is made up of posts. We don't talk about um, blogs. A lot of people say that, you know, I wrote a blog today. Well, you didn't actually, you wrote a post today. A blog is a, is a number of posts. Um, um, incidentally, WordPress started life as a blogging platform in 2003. Um, that was its, its prime reason for being. Um, pages weren't added to WordPress till about 2005. Um, so WordPress does blogging very well. It's been doing it for 16 years. Um, um, and the, the structure around that is excellent for SEO and for search. So posts are made up of a title, which is the name of that post. Now, a post title, you need to think about what you're putting for a post. For a post, it's not just like a headline. It's like a, not like a newspaper headline. Post should incorporate the keyword that you're wanting to be found for. It should be um, from that post. They should give you users a reasonable idea about what that post is about. So it should be descriptive. And as I've got there, it should be keyword-based. You should incorporate your keywords in that post title, ideally. It should also be relatively short. Um, you don't want 27 words in your post. It just becomes a bit unwieldy. Um, but with the same token, a two-word post title is hard to be descriptive and include your keywords. If you're doing something to try and trick Google into ranking you well, it probably won't. So with keywords, use them but use them carefully, remembering that your target market is your user, not Google. Call to action is so important, you know, and it's something that's often overlooked. We don't want people to get, we don't want to go to all the trouble writing a post, getting people to our website, getting them to read it and go, oh, that was nice, and then doing something else. A call to action encourages them to do what you want them to do, the whole reason for having that post in the first place. That might be to give you a call, it might be to sign up to your newsletter, it might be to buy a product. Whatever it is, every post you do should have a call to action. So when people read it, they go, oh, that was nice, and I can find out more about that. It's really simple to do, but it's often overlooked. You go to the trouble of getting them there, you want to make use of those people. So the call to action is whatever you want your visitors to do. OK, so a blog is made up of, we've mentioned posts, a post title, content, call to action, and there's a bunch of other elements that are general to most type of blogging platforms, but these are particular things that WordPress does extremely well. So WordPress has a capability to add an excerpt, which, again, is often not used. Um, some themes will make use of that, some won't, but it's a good habit for you to put content in that excerpt, and probably you might start with that excerpt, because that helps you focus what this post is all about. That's a short summary of this, this post, and it helps you focus in your mind what you're writing about. Um, and if you don't do it at the beginning, it's worth doing it at the end to see if you can briefly summarise that. It's a good exercise to do that, and it can help your rankings as well. Categories are really, really, really important as well. So categories are ways that um, we can group similar posts together. It makes it a great way for you to add keywords to your site. So your categories should be based around your keywords, which is probably your major products or services. And I've got here a maximum of six. I always like to limit the categories to Six, if you start putting more than that, you know, if you have a dozen or 15, suddenly you'll come up with a post and go, oh, well, it doesn't fit in any of those. I'll just add another category. Before you know it, you've got 30 or 60 categories and it's just completely overwhelming. So your categories should be fairly general, but should cover your main services. If you're doing, um, you know, you look at your services page or your products page, choose your six main categories. You probably want a category for news about your business. You know, my business name is called In A Day, so I'll have a category called In A Day News. That's about my business, new products, new services, new staff, 
Christmas closing times, those types of things. You might have um, industry news. So you might have a, um, you know, a WordPress news category, for example, that's got stuff happening in the industry. But then my other categories will be based around WordPress training, SEO training, workshops, those types of things, my important keywords. So categories are really important because the way that WordPress is structured, if you create a single post and put it in one category, WordPress has got one way to represent that. If you've got a post and put it in four categories, suddenly there's, there's four or five different ways that that content can be presented on your website and WordPress will do that for you automatically. Then if you start to incorporate tags, suddenly there can be dozens of ways that same content will be scattered throughout your site with different keywords. It'll rank differently for different things. So very easily for you to write one bit of content and have it tagged and categorised and lots of different ways for Google to find it. So tags are really important. They're, they're a bit different to the hashtags that we're mostly familiar with these days. Tags, again, are just ways to group um, your content together. Tags can be much more specific. If you mention a specific product, you would tag it with that product name. If you mention a location, you could tag it with that. Try not to mix up tags and categories, so you wouldn't necessarily have a category called WordPress Training Brisbane and then tag it WordPress Training Brisbane as well. Um, so that's getting a little bit over-optimised but they have to be relevant. Don't go putting tags on all of your posts because you went or rank well for that. If that post isn't about that tag, it'll probably harm you. The tags are there for your users so that they can easily find um, stuff that they're interested in. If they click on a tag and find a whole lot of posts that's nothing to do with that tag, they'll get annoyed, Google will get annoyed, and it won't help your rankings. Um, Tags, again, not a magic number. Use however many are relevant to that post, but typically three, four, six tags to a post. Probably wouldn't generally do many more than that. Um, activate comments if you want. Have, ad have archives there if you want. The other thing that you should be doing, and this links in a bit with the call to action, is link to stuff that you talk about. So when you mention something on your website that you've got more information about, Link to that so they can go to there to, to find out more about it if it's of interest to them. Okay, I wanted to get a little bit into some case studies. People often say to me, oh, I can't think of stuff to do. You know, I struggle to think of content. Um, for a, particularly for a business website, case studies are an awesome way to do that. Um, just talk about what you do day to day. This is an example of a client of mine. Obviously, they do termites. Their primary keywords are something like termite treatment, Kuparu. So they're termites and a suburb. So they will regularly do little stories about jobs that they've done with clients. They'll talk about what they do. They'll talk about what the problem. They'll talk about how they fixed it. They'll talk about the suburb. Um, they'll have a call to action. So they might do, for example, a little post, they do a job and they'll say, we had a call from Bob who lived in a two-storey brick home in Carindale. Uh, Bob saw a mud trail up the side of his house, he was worried about termites, he got us in for a termite inspection. Um, we did an inspection, discovered keyword, keyword, keyword. We recommended the following treatments, keyword, keyword. Bob had us back the next week and we did a termite treatment and now Bob is guaranteed against termites for four years. You know, Carindale is particularly susceptible to termites this time of year. If you live in Carindale and you're worried about termites, give us a call. Very short, very simple, full of keywords. They'll post that because they're regularly posting within, normally within minutes, literally minutes, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, but definitely within hours. They'll be on page one. They'll also call the post termite treatment Carindale, so they'll call the post their primary keyword. They'll be on page one for that post, and it'll last for ages. I think this one, Termites Camp Hill, this post, 2012, they posted that. They're on page one for Termites Camp Hill for that post they did seven years ago. So it's just gold for them. They're ranking page one very quickly for that. It lasts for ages and a very simple post. What they also do, though, is they will use that as an excuse to follow up with Bob. A few days later, I'll say to Bob, hey, Bob, we really enjoyed the job we did with you. We did a quick post on, on what we did with you. Here's a link to it. Um, feel free to pass it on to your friends and family. 
So Bob gets it, he reads it, that's me, I'm famous, I'm on the web. He sends that link to his friends and family. He's giving referrals without even knowing about it. So he's getting SEO rankings, you're getting referrals. Um, it's just gold. This particular video, you can see how complex, sorry, this particular post, it's got 30 words and a video. And that's still ranking on page one uh, for termites, Camp Hill. You know? So in your own niche, you can talk about what you do. You can talk about what you'd like to do. You know, there's lots of opportunities to talk about this type of stuff. Um, topical news. You know, when something comes up in the news and you think, oh, that's interesting. I can relate that to my, to my business. Blog about it. So when there's something on the news, talk about it. This um, termites is something that it used to be good when Today Tonight and A Current Affair was on because there was lots of stuff. But about every six weeks, they used to do a story on termites and they'd always promote it in advance. So the owner of this business would go, oh, next Tuesday, they're doing a story on termites. He will pre-write a story about termites, what he thinks it's going to be about. He'll watch the program. Um, he'll call it um, probably the same title they called it in the program. Um, he might do a video grab, he might incorporate that, but he's saying, as seen on a current affair where they said such and such, we believe such and such and we can help you with this such and such. So they will publish that within 10 minutes of that program going to air. Within half an hour, again, they'll be on page one and they will outrank a current affair for termites, a current affair. Because termites, because a current affair is about all types of stuff, but this is so focused. And, and so much so that, that you know, they... Oops, Going crazy here. Okay, so again, Termites Channel 7, this is a, a seven, a nine-year-old post. They're ranking two for this, for that type of things. And so much so that whenever these programs want experts, they Google termites, Brisbane, he comes up number one, they come and interview him, and he's getting promotion on that as well. So again, that's purely from him blogging because he's ranking well for those keywords. It can be applied to your businesses as well. Any questions, comments? Yep. Uh, in terms of using the video, yeah, there might be some issues with that. My philosophy often is ask for um, forgiveness, not permission. Um, I, I regularly do that stuff. I've never had an issue. Most of those programs aren't going to complain about you promoting their program. Um, and if they do, you take it down. I've never had it be an issue. Yeah, you need to be a little bit careful. You, if you start to say slanderous stuff, there can be issues. But if you're polite about it, they're happy for you to promote them. OK, guest blogging is another way um, of, of using your blogging strategy. So we're all probably familiar with, with sites and blogs that are high profile in our niche, don't be afraid to contact those sites and say, look, I can write an article to you, for you about this. Very often they will go, awesome, and as part of that they'll give you a link. It helps raise your profile. Um, but the same token, ask people who are profiled to see if they'd like to write an article on your site. So it's not hard to do and it's a great way to raise the profile of your blog. So, you know, just another strategy. Okay, so there's some ideas for, for things you can blog about, but, but people often struggle about, um, you know, what should I be blogging? What, what keywords should I be targeting? Now, Google suggests whenever you go to type something in Google, you start to type, and it's actually got a lot smarter these days. It used to just get those, those first words, and it will suggest phrases that you might be searching for. These phrases it suggests are actually based on live search volumes right now. So these keywords are things that people are high volume searches right now. So they're great things for you to do. These days it won't just get that, those first words. If it's a bit smarter than that, it'll use other phrases where that word's incorporated. But that's a really simple and really easy way. Also when you do your search queries at the bottom, there'll be links in Google of you might also like and it'll be a bunch of phrases that Google thinks are related to that. Again, they're based on high volume searches. So these are all great ways to get inspiration for things that people are looking for. Um, Google Alerts. Does anyone know of Google Alerts or not know of Google Alerts? So Google Alerts is a free um, 
service that Google offers where you can, you need a Google account, you can go and um, set up an alert so you can specify a keyword and it will notify you when it finds fresh content about that. So, you know, you wouldn't put in something very generic you get flooded with, but, but you can use keywords that are a bit more specific. You can get daily ones, you can get weekly notifications. It's a great way, if you've got a bit of a unique business name, to put your business name in there. You can get a Google to tell you when your business name comes up. So you can see what other people are saying about you, good and bad. You know, if people are saying good things about you in a forum, it'd be nice to know that, wouldn't it? If they're saying bad things about you, you want to know that even more but also put your competitor names. So when their names come up, you can get alerted to what they're doing. So if I did, a, and I regularly do alerts for WordPress Training Brisbane, I get notified whenever Google finds something fresh about that. I have a bit of a read. I can keep a good eye on what my competitors are doing. And if there's something that I'm wanting to share, I can use that for inspiration. I can do a blog post about something I've been alerted. I'll say, I came across this blog post about blah, blah, So that's using Google content for inspiration for your own blog post. Um, there's Google Alert, so, you know, Small Business Australia. You can do a whole range of things. It'll give you examples of the types of alerts. So definitely worth checking out if you're not familiar with it. Um, there's a Google Keyword tool called a Google Keyword Planner these days, and it's just recently gone to go on another reconfiguration, so it's completely different again. Um, it's part of the Google AdWords program. You do need to have an AdWords account to use it these days. It doesn't have to be an active account, so you can create an account and never create an AdWord, but it's a really cool tool to, and it's different to this now, but it gives you um, ideas of the type of volumes, and you can limit it. This is can't actually see, but this is prominent. You can restrict it to Australia. You can put in a target or a base keyword, and it'll show a whole lot of related phrases that um, Google thinks are relevant and give you an idea. Uh, well, this is a very old one. So it'll, it's quite different to this now, but it'll give you an idea of how many times that phrase is searched. I'll have to update this slide. Um, it also gives inspiration for, you know, blog posts. So, you know, what is small business? Um, very often, you know, how to start a business. So give you inspiration for an actual title for your post. So that's really cool. And my favorite tool of all, Google Trends. Do people know it, use it? Some do, most don't. It's absolutely amazing. So Google Trends, again, is based on actual ser searches on Google. You can put in a keyword phrase. You can say an area you're wanting, and it'll tell you up to, I think, 16 years trends on that keyword. So um, it'll give you related phrases. So here, you know, these are phrases that Google think is related to small business, um, and you can do comparisons. You know, if I'd searched, you know, I'm thinking, well, search engine optimization, should I spell that with an S or with a Z? I can use this to see what people are searching for, search engine optimization with a Z or an S in it, and I can see that if I was in America, I'd definitely use a Z. In Australia, it's primarily with an S, but there's still a significant percentage of people search for search engine optimization with a Z. So um, great tool for getting an understanding of what keywords you should target. Um, with any of these tools, you need to take them with a grain of salt, understand how they work. I did some work a number of years ago with WOW, Sight and Sound. They're now defunct, not my fault. But they'd got some consultants in um, to do some keyword analysis. They'd done this massive keyword analysis campaign. They wanted me to come in and review their final report. And they sat me down and said, look, there's our keywords. There's WOW. 64,000 times the searches a month. And they were patting themselves on the back about how strong their brand was. And I said, uh, have you ever heard of World of Warcraft? So, which everyone called WoW. World of Warcraft is the world's biggest multi-role playing game. And didn't even occur to them. They thought there were 64,000 people looking. Because it's a keyword that you think is relevant doesn't mean it is. If I search for SEO, I'll find that in some Asian countries, there's a massive number of people searching for SEO. And I might think, wow, 
there must be a lot of SEOs in those countries, but it's a surname in a lot of those countries. <laughs> so, you know, think outside the box a little bit. It, it, you need to understand what it all means. Anyway, I'm getting into SEO here. Um, comparative trends here. So here, you know, I can compare small business with online business. And I can see, well, you know, the trend for small business is reducing. And you might think, well, that's odd. But remember, this doesn't mean there's a less interest in small business. It could also mean that people are more selective about what they're searching for. They don't just search for sm small business. They'll search for small business Brisbane or, or much more specific keywords. We're getting cleverer with our keywords. We're using other ones. But, but again, you can do comparisons to get an idea of that. So I'll quickly move on. Oh, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, I don't know how we're doing time-wise. I'm happy to open for questions. Oh, yeah, I went through it pretty quick. <laughs> yes? So in regards to when you guys are using keywords, make sure sometimes you use long-tail keywords as well and focus on them. Yeah, so long-tail keywords are, are longer phrases, not just small business or not just shoes. You know, you might look for blue Nike Air Monarchs buy is a long-tail keyword because you'll, if you're focusing on a long-tail keyword, you'll be much easier to rank for that. But also people who put in longer phrases, and you think about your own search behaviour, they know what they want. They're more in the buying mode as well. People searching for shoes aren't really in the mood for buying shoes. People searching for buy Nike Blue Air Monarchs Brisbane, they're wanting to buy. They're ready to buy. They're, they're your perfect customer. Um, but yeah, enough of, of SEO. Um, blogging type questions? Yep. Um, what's the, so I've seen some people have websites and they've had hundreds of blogs and they've listed them and it just gives too long, it just gets too boring. What's the best way to present blogs so it's fresh and it's interesting? Well, well, as I said, blog, a blog is typically hierarchical, so the most recent ones are there. You split them up into categories so people can choose them. Uh, which category is of most interest. WordPress provides a, a free and reasonably good search capability so people can search for what they're interested in. Very often people won't arrive at your blog page. They'll arrive at a particular post because they've searched for it. Um, but if that post is in relevant categories and is tagged appropriately, they can then go, oh, that was interesting. I can click on this tag and find out more about something more specific. And WordPress automatically creates a tag page that lists all of the posts that have been tagged with that particular tag. Um, so there's lots of ways to do it. I'm not a fan of deleting stuff ever. Um, even if it's out of date, I'll generally go back and update it and say, here's an update because it's all been indexed, it's all content, it's all keywords, and as long as, as long as it's clear when it was published, you know, I do like to put dates and times on my posts because you know, if someone gets a 15-year-old post, <laughs> I want them to know it's 15 years old. Um, but yeah, well, I, I had a, uh, spoke earlier about you know, posting on social media versus posting on your own website. Um, the likes of Facebook and LinkedIn and most social media platforms will allow you to post these days, but the only people who see it are people who are online at the moment. You know, they've got their notifications turned off, so unless they happen to be there, they probably won't see it. And if they do see it and look for it a week later, good luck with that. So um, there's value in putting that stuff on social media, but use your own blog on your own website as the core platform for that. It'll be indexed by Google, it'll stay there forever, they'll always be able to find it and reference it from social media. Talk about it, encourage them to come to your website, because once they're on the website, then you can cross-sell and upsell and get their email address and you know, you've got more control on that space. So anything you're posting, put the time and effort on your website and then refer reference it on your social media. Yep? Can you add the tags into, a, um, say, a, a blog that you did, I don't know, five years ago or something? Right? Yeah, absolutely. You, you can retrospectively go and edit that. Um, also, one of the nice features of WordPress is you can schedule posts. So if you've got a, a day or a morning free, you can start posts and you might have three or four done. Um, and you can schedule them by way to, to automatically appear in the next week and then the following Tuesday. So, so that can happen. You can also post backdate ones. So I'm a big, big fan of when people create a new site. Don't put six posts on today. Create your site, but then put some posts on and backdate them. So it looks like you've been around for six months or two years.
So think about some, some exciting things that you've done in the last two years and write posts about that. Google knows that you freshly published that, but people who then come to your brand new website will go, oh, well, I've been around for a while. And it will all still help with rankings if you're using keywords. You know, you, you'd be disinclined to, to publish today some huge event that you did six months ago, but you can and just date it six months ago. Yep. What's your take on updating a post that's in position one or zero? It can be scary. Um, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But um, is that what you're meaning? If, if it's already ranking really well, should you update it? It's probably, it's, it's almost certainly not going to harm it, depending what you're doing to update it. I wouldn't be deleting it. <laughs> um, but if, if it's no longer, if it's out of date, I certainly would consider updating it and, and, and saying, you know, August 2019 update, blah, 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 blah. So add to it. I, I don't see an issue with that. Yep. How many work and how often do you do Very good question. There's not a magic number. Um, how often is a really good one. SEOs will tell you you need to do a blog post every week. So, you know, people go, oh my God, got to do a blog post, and they're stressing about it all week. And Friday comes, they go, oh dear, I haven't done it. I'll just do this. And it's crap. And they know it's crap, and they hate doing it. And Google knows it's crap. <laughs> and anyone who reads it knows it's crap. Um, complete. Not a complete waste of time, but it's the wrong philosophy. You're putting pressure on yourself. My philosophy is, yes, it's good to do stuff regularly. It's more important that what you post is actually useful and interesting and something you're passionate about. So change your mindset. Don't think, oh, I have to do something every week. Think, oh, that was on the news or this happened. I'm excited about that. I'll post about it. That'll come out in your post. It'll come out in your rankings. Your users will respond better to it. And before you know it, you'll be posting four times a week and enjoying it. So it's just a mindset thing. So good to do regular, more important that what you're posting is useful. In terms of size, um, whatever's relevant. You know, the post I gave there was a video and 20 words. That's working. Um, why would you spend, you know, an hour putting a thousand words around that? You know, people don't want it, don't need it. So if, if you can get away with, with 20 words, well, I won't say get away. Um, um, I've done a little exercise this last week on my own site because I've got lots of sites and mostly they're neglected. But on my own site, in a day.com.au, I've published in the last um, nine days five posts. Um, I've seen a 30% increase in traffic and a 20% increase in sales in, in nine days. Half of those posts were only published two days ago. So that will continue for the next six months. So if, if you're wanting to see, look at my website, inaday.com.au. I'd hope that they are good posts. They're probably a bit longer than I would normally like, but I get carried away. Um, I'll just show quickly. Choosing the best website platform for your small business, SEO Training Brisbane. Six SEO for WordPress tips. Ten questions to ask when choosing a WordPress trainer. So I'll just click one of these. This was published 29th of July. You know, it's got a nice image. It's got some texts. I've got images to break it up. I've got some titles, which again, full of keywords. Um, just, it's not.